In the vast, undulating expanse of the Pacific coast, California's oldest lighthouse stands as a beacon of resilience. But its most captivating story isn't about its guiding light. It's about the lady in the lighthouse who transformed it into an emblem of luxury and dedication. In 1843, Emily Metland was born into a respectable Michigan family. Her older sister had married a prominent physician named Melanchthon from the Old Money Fish family, though she passed away hardly after the honeymoon had ended. When Emily was just 17 years old, her family persuaded her to follow in her sister's footsteps and tie the knot with her late sister's widower. Little did she know, this would be the beginning of an adventure. Fish whisked her away from her small town in Michigan, traveling across the world to China, where he was serving as the U.S. Vice Consul in Shanghai an admiral position that came with countless financial perks. For the first time in her life, Emily was able to experience a new culture. Not only were they living like royalty abroad, Emily now had her own personal assistant named Lu Q, who could help her navigate the city and aid in raising Emily's niece, Juliet. Just as Emily was starting to fit in, civil war broke out in America. Her husband, quick to respond, pledged his allegiance to General Sherman and the Union Army, and the family headed back stateside. On her way out of China, Emily took great care to pack antique porcelains to bring home with her. In addition, she hired her local assistant to accompany her during her travels. When the fishes arrived in the state of Georgia, Emily tailed behind her husband as he fought alongside General Sherman. Though their campaigns were successful, tragedy struck just as things were returning to normal. In 1891, Melanchthon passed away, leaving Emily a very wealthy widow, but she was not ready for the adventures to end. She had traveled the world, been through war, and could not imagine rotting away in a stuffy house for the rest of her life. Her adopted daughter at this point, Juliet, had grown up and married a naval officer by the name of Henry Nichols. Henry listened to his mother-in-law's plight, and after pulling some strings, came to her with a unique opportunity. There was an opening for the position of keeper at the Point Pinos Lighthouse in Monterey Bay, California. It would require her to change the oil in the lamp every few hours during the night, but if she wanted the responsibility, it was hers to have. Without hesitation, Emily accepted the offer. It's important to understand this about lighthouses. They are not fancy places. They tend to be bare bones, with just the essentials, but Emily had a different vision. She had her antiques and fine furnishings shipped from her Oakland mansion to Point Pinos. Not only was she intent on running the lighthouse with efficiency the region had never seen before, she was going to do it in style. She paid for fertile soil to be shipped in, covering the lighthouse grounds so that she could plant exotic flowers and mature shrubs, creating formal gardens. Furthermore, she bred poodles and show horses on the ground, and hosted massive parties for members of high society. And while any of those things could sound like full-time jobs in and of themselves, she took her job more seriously than most other keepers. Emily created extensively detailed logs every day, maintained the light by night, and routinely performed maintenance on the lighthouse, ensuring that its condition was always perfect. Inside the lighthouse, her living room was staged with the most stylish furniture of the era, with a piano facing the classically styled fireplace mantle. Her kitchen, while simple by today's standards, provided everything she needed for Lu Q to prepare proper meals. Unlike the men who took the very same positions in other lighthouses, she had proper china to enjoy afternoon tea. And somehow, amidst her busy day-to-day -day life, she found the time to read and write, making the lighthouse her home. Even though the space was challenging to configure, she incorporated fine antique furniture into her bedroom. In this still, we can gain a sense of her aesthetic, imagining her getting ready for her day with white gloves in an elegant Victorian-era dress. She became so well-known for her style and grandiose way of life that she was even given the nickname the Socialite Keeper. Emily worked hard for many years in the lighthouse, flawlessly performing her job and earning accolades for going beyond the call of duty on her perfectly maintained site. She served at the lighthouse for more than 20 years, until her body could no longer keep up with her drive for perfection. She retired in 1914 and later passed away in 1931 at the age of 88.
Point Pinot's lighthouse has had many more keepers over the years, as it has modernized and moved away from oil to keep the light shining. But one thing remains. Point Pinot's continues to be the oldest operational lighthouse in California, and continues to use the same third-order Fresnel lens, which was installed when the lighthouse was completed in 1855. Today, it is open to the public for tours. What did you think about the lighthouse? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. And while you're there, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.